Hello, this is Survival Guyver, and today we'll be looking at the Tysor Titanium Pry Bar. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's T I S U R. Tysor, I guess. It's a small EDC, lightweight but strong titanium pry bar. So, on the bottom, you can see it's got a belt clip, pocket clip. It's actually quite comfortable. Uh, it would never be a multi tool or a pry bar without a bottle opener. So, it has a bottle opener there. And then there's this metal blade thing here, and I'll show you what that is in just a moment here. All right, so this cutter is really stiff, so I have to kind of fiddle with it. Um, so I haven't used the cutter very often, but it is really, really sharp. This is for cutting cordage, uh, whether it be small rope, paracord, twine, uh, even some plastic like zip ties. It'll cut them just fine. You know, Put it in and pull. I don't have any here to show you because I clean the desk. Um, but it just folds up right there. It has a... I'm going to show you what's going on at the end in a moment. Um, so it's got a nice flat pry there, like a nail puller. It could also probably be used as a flathead screwdriver. I believe they do suggest that in the uh, description. But what I do like, it's not completely flat on the bottom. It's got a little bit of an angle to it. So you can put this under a nail and get some decent leverage with it. Um, by the way, this is only 3.52 ounces. Uh, length is 5.63 inches. Um, yeah, so it's about half inch. It's a little less than half inch thick or width. And then probably about a quarter inch that way. So why did I want to show you something else on this? I'm way to the end. Well, this end for the lanyard, it's a lanyard hole, right? But it's oddly hex-shaped. It doesn't tell you that you can use it for anything other than a lanyard. So I did a little bit of research. It looks like, well, it might be able to fit a bit, like a screwdriver bit. So let's take a look. Typical quarter inch. This is um, a spanner from one of the um, rock tool uh, multi-tool sets. And unfortunately, no, it doesn't fit in here. It'll fit like that, but it's too big. So I'll put that down there. And I have this one out of one of the one of the two cobalt precision sets sets that I did not like because the bits were not uh, swappable because they're different sizes. This one is really small, and you can see it just spins. So that's pointless. However, there is a bit that does fit. This is also from a Cobalt Precision set. This is my complaint about those sets where the bits are two different sizes, but yet they're both considered the same precision set. Weird. This one does fit. So I'll put that in there, and lo and behold, that fits. So if you need something with some leverage and you had a decent set, it'd be fine. So... What size is this? Because they don't tell you on it. Let me put the tool down for a moment. I will grab my caliper. My handy dandy caliper. Let's turn it on. This is really hard to do with the camera in the way because I can't see what I'm doing. So, zero it out. Pull this back a little bit. Get on the flats. That says 3.77 millimeters. What is that? About an eighth in inches, I think. Um, so somebody's got to do the conversion. I'll, I might just do it and put it in the description when I figure it out. Uh, but 3.77 millimeters. Now, if I zero this out again, if I put this on the inside here, an inside diameter, I get... I can't see where the end of this is. There it is. 4.5 millimeter. Now, I'm assuming the reason I can't get a, a decent amount on that is because it's odd shaped and this is really not suited for something so small on that end. Um, but <laughs> if you have some of these bits floating around, you have an extra tool you didn't have prior. Obviously, it's now, you're limited to how much torque you can put on it without destroying the bit. 
you know, the bridge will shear off with too much torque. But that's not bad, especially for light duty things. So if you really need to come down to it, you have an option for a bit size that will fit that. I don't know how common this size is. Uh, I'm not talking about the, the hex, but the, um, the actual bit size on these. Um, so that's an added bonus, in my opinion, because they don't talk about it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice here, apparently. Um, I do like how this is open on the inside, like little triangles on both sides in opposing directions. It's a kind of a cool design. Also makes it really light, but really easy to grip. Even with gloves on, you get a good amount of get a good amount of grip on both sides and on the top and bottom of this. So that's not so bad, right? So that's about all I can tell you on this. Um, it doesn't tell me what the material of the steel blade is. It is some kind of stainless steel. I just don't know what grade. It doesn't specify. Um, doesn't come with a keychain. It actually. It comes with a plastic case with all weird things. Right, sorry for the pause there if you saw something flicker. It comes with a plastic case, which is really odd because the case is much larger. Put that down there. This is the case it comes with. Just a cheap little plastic case with foam on the inside. So it does say Tysor Titanium EDC Pry Bar K1 Titanium keychain for whatever that means. Um, so clearly it's made in China. Uh, if you want a cheap case, you know, it comes with it. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, I will leave a description, uh, in the description I will leave a link to Amazon where I found this. Um, and that same link will have the other two colors, the black and the multicolored one. If you want to take a look at it um, and that's about it so uh, if you like the video please press like if you haven't subscribed please subscribe lots of other cool tools coming down the pike here and knives and um, I will keep looking for alternative uses for just about everything so yeah thank you for watching have a glorious day